be clobber in time for WWE. Hopefully not literally, as the rumours have resurfaced today. CM Punk could be heading back to WWE. Dave Meltzer reported earlier today that CM Punk was in talks with WWE. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select has debunked that a little bit today, but he has said that CM Punk is willing to talk and is willing to go back to WWE. It's interesting to me because if you remember when Cody jumped from AEW to WWE, we saw the same thing. Journalists didn't know which way to report and then Cody showed up. It was the same with Bray Wyatt and the White Rabbit as well. There was rumours from some people that Bray was coming back. Others debunked that. Then Bray did come back. So do you want to see CM Punk back in WWE? Let me know in the comments below. Well, tonight on SmackDown, while they were plugging the Seth and Nakamura match, Corey Graves would say the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was making the world forget he ever existed. Word for word, another CM Punk old school promo. Around Seth Rollins again, this cannot be a coincidence. I'm going to say it. CM Punk to WWE confirmed. Now, you know NXT this week coming is literally NXT WrestleMania at this point. We are looking likely that we're going to see the return of The Undertaker. Now, there was a lot of rumours and speculation about this earlier tonight. But during SmackDown, there was a commercial about NXT where you clearly, at the end... Heard the gong of The Undertaker. Undertaker on NXT next Tuesday night. Unmissable. This is Things You Might Have Missed. From Smackdown on the fast lane to fast lane. Make sure you hit the like button. And if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button too. LA Knight would kick off SmackDown this week. Great ovation for him. The bloodline didn't take long to interrupt as Paul Heyman put over LA Knight, calling him the next big thing, the next big megastar of WWE. John Cena would pay it back as he would save LA Knight from a bloodline beatdown before it began. Obviously, after LA Knight saved him last week, we'd use this segment to set up a main event between LA Knight and Jimmy Uso. Worth noting, Jimmy again was acting as if he was Roman Reigns, as if he was the tribal chief. He took the microphone from Paul Heyman. He was directing orders. He called himself him. So I don't know if Roman's going to appreciate this newfound confidence, if you will, in Jimmy Uso. Next week is the season premiere of Friday Night Smackdown, and it marks the return of the tribal chief. Roman Reigns will be on SmackDown at long last next week. And he's going to have a lot to talk about because the Judgment Day were on SmackDown this week alongside J.D. McDonough, who was there at the request of Rhea Ripley. Rhea again establishing this leadership role in the Judgment Day. We'd see it again as Bloodline walked into their locker room. Judgment Day were there. We got a tense old standoff between the two factions and Rhea would ask everyone to leave as her and Heyman needed to talk. Now, the speculation straight away goes to Survivor Series. Could this be the team for War Games? Rhea would try to convince Paul by saying that the Bloodline and Judgment Day are stronger together, but Paul wouldn't give this the OK without the acknowledgement and approval of Roman Reigns. Rhea, though, to go into the Bloodline locker room, look Paul Heyman in the face, and say, acknowledge me. Insane! She also referenced the fact that Jey Uso acknowledged her on Monday night. Uh, the main event did finish on a disqualification, but we would see the Judgment Day and the Bloodline shaking hands, and then Cody and Jay would come out to equalise some of the numbers. And oh my gosh, yes, we did get Jay and Jimmy face to face. you got to think, this is setting up for Survivor Series. War Games, it has to be at this point. I cannot wait. Honestly, what an ending to SmackDown. Genuinely very fun. We had some breaking news during SmackDown. Next week, Triple H will be on the show. Why? What is Triple H going to do? He's got to announce something, hasn't he? Like, he does, he's not going to wrestle. So what is Triple H going to say and do next week on the season premiere of SmackDown? I don't know. Do you know what? Next week for WWE is shaping up to be unmissable. Can they coexist 
as Oscar and Charlotte Flair took on damage control in the first match of SmackDown tonight in tag team action. Very good match. They got a lot of time. Despite a misplaced kick from Charlotte to Oscar, Charlotte was able to pin Bailey in this match. There was no other physicality between Oscar and Charlotte, so technically they did coexist. Obviously, with the removal of Bailey, we have a triple threat match for the women's championship tomorrow night at Fastlane. Should be a pretty decent match, I think. And obviously, a little speculation of Kyrie Sane potentially making a WWE return tomorrow night. Going to be very interesting, going to be fun to watch. I'd love to see Kyrie Sane back in a WWE ring. Alba Fire and Isla Dawn got another promo this week. Great visuals here with the cauldron and the smoke as they said they're going to get everything they wanted. And I have to admit, right at the end of this promo, this weird like owl thing sort of popped up on the screen. It scared the shit out of me. Oh my God, this is like the new Lily jump scare, isn't it? <laughs> Bobby Lashley defeated Rey Mysterio tonight. The Street Profits basically committed a murder on Joaquin Wilde outside the ring. But obviously Lashley pinning Rey Mysterio. Have to say, this has got to put Lashley even closer to being in contention for the United States Championship. Now he's pinned the US Champion. Tomorrow night is supposed to be a six-man tag match with the Street Profits and Lashley versus the LWO. We'd find out, though, there is an open spot on Team LWO as Ray come out of the doctor's office and said that basically it's just Ray and Escobar. He had to make a phone call. Hopefully, that is Carlito. Obviously, there's rumours and speculation that Carlito re-signed with WWE a while ago. So this could be a great way to usher him back in at Fastlane. I'm here for it. Are you? This is the face you make. When your 150 million viewers just thought you lose to Dragon Lee. Dragon Lee is getting pushed dramatically huge on the main roster and I love it. Grayson Waller did try to interfere. He was neutralised by Cameron Grimes. And I'm here for this. This tag team of Dragon Lee and Cameron Grimes versus Theory and Grayson Waller. What? That is pretty cool. This is basically the future of WWE going at it. Again, this will be pretty damn good. I'm sure this match will play out maybe next week in a tag match. We got like a video package recap tonight for Seth and Nakamura, obviously for the World Heavyweight Championship tomorrow night at Fastlane. But I wanted to ask you, who do you think is going to win, Seth or Nakamura? Let me know in the comments down below. But it may not matter who wins because this is last man standing. Seth and Nakamura are going to obliterate each other and Damian Priest was watching on with a briefcase. Are we going to get a money in the bank cash in at Fastlane? The other anticipated name is, of course, Jade Cargill. We know that she's coming. We've seen the hype. Could they debut her at Fastlane? Could they have her sitting in the audience? Could they announce her as being on NXT Tuesday because it's basically WrestleMania at this point? <laughs> maybe, maybe. We'll have to wait and see if Jade shows up at Fastlane. 10 out of 10 show genuinely build up a lot of hype for Fastlane. Obviously, maybe looking forward to Survivor Series 2. Lots on the show. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Turn on notifications. We'll be back right here tomorrow for things you might have missed for Fastlane. So don't miss that. And I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace!